Hey everybody, welcome back to the second video in the free or the transform tool series. Today we're going to be going over the free transform. The free transform allows you to easily scale, move, and rotate your image or selection. It does come with tool options, which are very simple and basic to understand. It just kind of gives you some more control and fine tuning available for what you'd like to do. So to activate the free transform, you can either click on the transform tool or hit Control T. And as you can see, the boxes will appear around your image. So by default, it should be the free transform option here, the tool options, and it'll be the first box here, right? It automatically will give you the position of the image or selection on your canvas, which is 1750 by 1086 or 1,186, which seems pretty, looks good. So this will be the 17, this will be 1186, I think. And just to make things easy, we'll go over the simple stuff here on the bottom. This is gonna rotate your um, selection 90 degrees. You can do it clockwise or counterclockwise, or you can mirror the selection. Now this mirror is gonna make a permanent mirror to your selection or uh, transform image. It's not like you're mirroring the canvas for drawing purposes, just to, you know, back and forth. This is a permanent transform, which you can actually also do under image, um, mirror horizontally, or layer, and it'll do that for you. So let's say we mirror it this way, and we like that, and you want to apply it, we can. And now it should update here in the overview, showing that this is the correct orientation of the image. And if I hit M to mirror it, it's a temp it's not a permanent change I'm doing, it's temporary just to see what it looks like on mirrored and not mirrored. So I'm going to undo that. Alright, and now we're going to go up to the options to use the free transform tool. We have position, rotate, scale, and shear. Now all of this is available off the bat. Uh, this is the shear. It'll show up when you hover above the lines here. You can do it either way. Just click and drag. You can scale it. If you hold shift, it will scale proportionately. And if you want to rotate it, just hover your mouse over the corner where the little spinny icon shows up and you can go ahead and spin that or rotate it. And if you want to move it, just click anywhere within the box and click and drag. Put that back to the original position. So some things that are really nice about the free transform tool. I'm going to reset that. If we go to rotate, actually not want to select. We'll just select our arm here. We're going to hit Ctrl T. We're going to go to rotate. So if I rotate this now, it is rotating within the center of this pivot here. If for whatever reason I need to, I want to rotate based on the elbow, I can click on that pivot, drag it over to the elbow, and now if I rotate it, it is rotating based on this point. This can be very helpful when you're sketching and you're trying to figure out how you want the, the pose to be, or maybe you just want to take a look at a different pose in general before you get to the final artwork, or whatever else you're doing. This is very useful. All right, so we'll just leave that alone, put it back there, and go to rotate. So if we click on the rotate option, if you want to be more precise with that, you can actually put in values here for the X, Y, and Z. The Z will give you the rotation based on the 2D plane, and the X and Y will give you more of a 3D rotation. This is kind of similar to perspective, which we'll go over in the next video. You can see how that gives you a little bit of a more dynamic look. Reset that, we're just going to hit zero. And for scale, you can actually be pretty precise with this as well. So let's say you want to scale this down to 50%, you just type in 50 and it scales it down automatically for you. Now make sure if you want to do it proportionately, you have this um, locked where it keeps it uniform. If you don't have it locked and put this back up to 100, it's only going to scale up the width part by 100% and keep the height at 50. So just make sure you're mindful that if you're going to be using precise numbers. And shear, 
it needs to be it's pretty much the same thing if you want more precise numbers like let's say you want to make this 90 percent you can make it 90 percent you do that by just right clicking on that hitting the backspace or the yeah the backspace key and just typing in whatever you want that to be you can hit the enter key to make that final or you can hit the apply button down here and that is pretty much it for this year all right so we go back up here to the pivot if we lock this it will transform based where that pivot is going to be so if we go ahead and shift you can see that we're scaling this down towards that pivot point whereas before if we put that back in the center it just scales into the center so make sure to have that checked on if you need to scale or anything around that point the same well the rotate already went over but it might be helpful depending on what you're doing and the filter just defines how blurry the image might be or how much sharpness needs to be applied to kind of keep that quality as you move this and transform it around um, I was using bicubic for a while but Bell seems to be pretty nice on its own obviously if you scale it down it is going to be a reduction in quality and if I want to scale this back up oops, it looks pretty good it's still a little fuzzy but otherwise it's pretty clear so if I did or maybe I used my one here I don't actually remember which one I was using before that's pretty blurry so it's softening it scale it back up Now if you have a group and you have multiple layers under it, so I'll go ahead and set that up here. You can actually transform everything in their group. Just click on the folder icon here. So the topmost layer in that group, which should be labeled group or whatever you rename it. The control T. And you can go ahead and transform it just like you would an individual layer or a selection. And this can be helpful when you want to move things around in a group. Or let's say you have line art and color in there and you need to do some tweaking to it but you don't want to go and do it to each individual layer and that i do very often especially when i'm sketching i might you know shrink this down and then go over here and move it there and then i can continue my sketch for the next group or the next layer another thing to keep in mind with editing in krita for the transform tool is it has continuous transform which means that if i go ahead and transform this and hit enter and go to transform it again that last point here that last change is still retaining it's still there and my last pivot point um position is still there so i can go ahead and continue and reset that or i can move it again it's not going to reset to the middle so let's say you're making all these changes and you want to go ahead and reset everything back to the way it was like oh this is great we scaled it up and down you know but i want it to go back to the way it was you can hit reset and it changed it resets everything you've done for that transform before you hit apply or enter and that's it for the free transform tool hopefully that was helpful to you guys it's pretty simple very basic but there are a lot of cool well, a lot of options that you can use to fine tune your transform and um, make it work for you, especially at, at the basic level. Especially if you're starting off too, you're like, well, I want to move this around. It just gives you a little bit more control, which is really nice. Next video, we're going to be going over the perspective, which is similar to how we can shear and give it a little bit of perspective or the rotate where we have the X and Y. But it's, it's, not quite the, it's not quite the same. There's still some other features and controls that are unique to that option. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And I hope you're excited for this series. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below, as always. And make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next videos coming up either. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.